The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, Unew Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. love of god comment (laughs) so for tonight's show we're talking about uh the current education system and whether or not children are really benefiting um they are the the median household income in bro bridges louisiana is thirty five thousand six hundred and forty three dollars and what makes this school so special is they just had a 100% college acceptance rate. And 70% of those students that were accepted to college were accepted to Ivy League schools. This school does not have, from what they were saying in the interview, they do not have certified teachers teaching at this school. They even have one class where there isn't a teacher at all. They, the students were teaching each other from an MIT trigonometry book that they had pulled offline. Now, where we're from, (laughs) um, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but I do know for a fact the school that we went to, I don't think has seen a 100% college acceptance. I don't even think they've seen a 100% graduation rate in years. If they have... It was maybe one year because there's always people dropping out. Yeah, around here, it's, it's, it just it happens. I mean, I got my good enough degree. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, I, w- I went on a website. Uh, it's called uh, DataUSA.io, and you can actually pull comparisons between two different cities. So I pulled a comparison between Bro Bridge, Louisiana. And Fultondale, Alabama. Now, the reason why we used Fultondale is they have a very similar population. Now, the population between the two, um, roughly about 8,500 people. And as I said, the median household income in Brobridge is $35,000, where the median household income in Fultondale, Alabama, which is a suburb of Birmingham, is $54,000. Now, you had some statistics pulled up on your phone earlier. Another reason why we were comparing them is they had similar ACT scores. Yeah, uh, well, when you were... The, the first polling we did when we looked up Bow Bridges, it was like, for a range of like two years, they had a 24 average ACT score. That's what Fultondale is. They're, they're setting it around a 24 on ACT. Right. But they only have a 73% graduation rate. Right. And so you've got a, a lower income area with a higher poverty rate graduating more students with less money. Right. I mean, we have all the money, but we're, we're losing 27% of our students. So, I mean, then it's obviously safe to say then that funding, you know, state funding privatized funding, things of that nature, don't necessarily affect the school as far as graduation rates and <coughs> test scores, things like that. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a small test sample because it's, it's one school right. that you're looking at in Louisiana, but it's showing that you can have people donating money and they're doing better than a school that is federally funded because most every school in Alabama is Title I. Right. So that's they're getting some assistance from the federal government. Right. And a state-funded institution. So uh, some other comparisons between uh, Brobridge and Fultondale. Uh, there are, at the time of this comparison, uh, 3,197 employed individuals in the city of Brobridge, where there are 4,826 employed people in the city of Fultondale. Yep. The poverty rate, though, 
there's there's a big disparity in the poverty rate between the two cities. Well, about it's eleven percent, right on the right on the nose. Yeah, Fultondale has a ten point eight percent poverty poverty rate, where Brobridge has twenty one point eight percent. Yeah, that's that's not abnormally high. It's not, but you know, again, we're looking at. Um, Obviously, something is going on in Brobridge that is making kids want to learn, want to excel, and better themselves. I think when you when you look at the breakdown of it, it's probably the kids in Brobridge are going, okay, what are our options? We can go to college. Right. But if we don't go to college, what else can we do? And so that's a, that's a powerful motivator. Right. If you have no options, I mean, you got to go with what you got. Which, you know, as we as we've talked before, we we were in kind of the same boat here, because by the time you and I reached twelfth uh, grade, the sock industry in Fort Payne was already moving out. We do still have other <laughs> industries in the city of Fort Payne. And, um, and close. I mean, you you don't have to just go to Fort Payne. You can go over to Scottsboro or yeah, gas is not out of the way. I mean, right. It's a little bit of a drive, but you can get there. Yeah, it's a commute for sure. It'd be like Chattanooga. Yeah. So you know, I'd, I'd really like to know what is <laughs> that is that is making these kids say, you know what. I want to do better. I want to have a successful life. They got that learning sauce. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what. I would actually like to tour the school. I would love to see it. I would, I would as well. That would, because I, I, I have, I'll go to college now and I have never walked into a classroom and seen a hundred percent of one class fully invested in the class. I mean, I look around in my classes when I'm not doodling <laughs> you know, there's people on their cell phones texting their friends. I've seen people in the back Snapchat while the instructor is teaching us. It's like, the hell are you doing? You know, and and that's that's the other thing about college, you know. And obviously, you know, each case, it's it's a case by case thing, but you know, it's. <laughs> Let's just say there's how, how many people would you say are in your class? It depends on the class. If it's one of my computer classes, eight to ten. If it's one of my core courses, like if I was doing like a math a math class, there was thirty people. Okay, so we'll use your math class as an example, and we'll say just for argument's sake that there are exactly thirty people. Of those thirty people, maybe ten of them actually having to pay out of pocket to go to school. Maybe. Of those 10, we'll say four of them are the ones <laughs> sitting in the back of the class, Snapchatting, not paying attention to the instructor. You are paying money to go to school. Yeah. You're not going on a, you know, you're, you're, you're not there on a football scholarship. You're not there on a band scholar. You're paying money out of pocket. And then you're... Sitting in the back of class, not paying attention, sending pictures on the phone, texting your sweetheart, doing whatever, and then you get pissed off when it comes time for final exams. You don't know shit about what's going on in class. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, and that's that's the thing about like I have Pell Grant, so like my college is paid for by the government, right? You know, I have every opportunity to fuck off and. Say, oh, it's not my money I'm losing. I mean... No, it's my money you're losing. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for the paper, buddy. But, I mean, I have every opportunity to fuck off and and, and be on the taxpayer's dime, but I'm sitting here going, okay, look, I've got to learn this. Yeah. Because eventually, I'm going to need this. Not so much the math part. Uh, I should, if I ever have to do another distance formula or quadratic equation, I'll probably shoot myself. You know, that's the other thing, too. Math. I don't know what in God's good name is going on with math in school these days. It, this this common core crap that they're teaching. 
I mean, it reminds me of that Abbott and Costello skit. 13 times 7 equals 28. Hey, the numbers work. I've seen it. Yes, the numbers did work, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pull up an example here. And, and uh, this, this is an image that I'm pulling off of Google. So problem says Jack used the number line below to solve 427 minus 316. Find his error. Then write a letter to Jack telling him what he did right and what he should do to fix his mistake. And then it's got the number line there and God knows what's going on with it. It's witchcraft. Uh, That's what yeah. it is. <laughs> but you know, the parent of this child went off on the side of the paper and he wrote down a traditional subtraction problem. He wrote 427 minus 316, then drew the line and wrote the answer. And his response to this teacher is perfect. I absolutely love this. <laughs> it says, Dear Jack, don't feel bad. I have a Bachelor of Science degree in electronics engineering, which included extensive study in differential equations and other higher math applications. I cannot explain the common core mathematics approach, nor get the answer correct. In the real world, simplification is valued over complication. Therefore, and then he writes out the problem again. 427 minus 316 equals 111. The answer is solved in under five seconds. The process used is ridiculous and would result in termination if used. Ah, when it, when it comes to learning... I adhere to the KISS rule. Keep it simple, stupid. There you go. There's no need to further. Math is hard enough without going through and going, well, how can we church it up? Don't church it up. Yeah, there's, I mean, it's it's simple. What? And they're, and they're doing this in elementary school. <laughs> Math was hard enough when I was in elementary school. Trying to, you know, the biggest thing I had a problem with was multiplication and division when I was in elementary school. I was and always, fractions, and I had difficulty with fractions. I was always fairly good at math, and if anybody that went to school with me is listening, haha, I'm in college now, so <laughs> argue with me. <laughs> <laughs> but the way they're doing this now, you know, I got, I got another example pulled up here. The old way of doing addition: twenty nine plus seventeen equals forty six. Twenty nine on top of the seventeen. 9 plus 7 is 16. Put the 6, carry the 1. 2 plus 2 is 4. The answer is 46. That is correct. Well, the new way they're showing in Common Core Math, you do 20 plus 9 and 10 plus 7. Then you drop that down. You have 30 plus 16. Well, now we need to break down that 16 so it goes to 10 plus 6. You add the 10 to the 30, and then you get 40 plus 6 equals 46. You have added... Like five extra steps into this that are not necessary. What happens to the good old days? You just look down and count on your fingers. I mean, you can count to twenty if you're if you're barefoot. I mean, twenty one if I'm butt naked. Yeah, twenty one if you're butt naked. We won't get into that one. <laughs> I don't know. I think that's some kind of weird fraction for you. <laughs> but I mean, you can count. Like, just count on your, if you have to, you can count on your fingers. There's no need to be splitting numbers apart and getting fancy. It's addition. Trust me, as you go, this is going to get more difficult already. Right. Because you're going to go from addition and subtraction to multiplication and division. Then you're going to do it all with fractions. And then, oh boy, the letters show up. Oh, then you get to solve for X. I don't and... want to solve for X. They need they, to... They, Find your own ex. Um, <laughs> Jesus, I don't need to help you with your I relationship. I found my problem. own ex, and that's why she's my ex. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, math inevitably gets harder as you go. It was just like when we were doing English. Did you do Shirley Method? No. Okay. The, the, grade, the grades below us did the Shirley Method. I don't know what that is. I, yeah. I, I, but, I'm sitting here dumbfounded. I don't even know what you're talking about. I, I, re, I remember hearing about it because uh, when I was in, like, sixth grade... We the way we learned English was just we learned English. This is a preposition. This is a noun. This is a pronoun. Right. But the Shirley Method, they did it in like a sing song form. They had songs about what pronouns did and what adjectives did and stuff like that. And they were like, "Oh, this is going to make people so much better at English." But it didn't. 
they were still having problems with English scores, so our school stopped using the Shirley Method. No, what will make people better at English is... Reading a book. Yeah, reading a book, <laughs> students paying attention, and, <coughs> you know, again, this is a case-by-case basis, but teachers who give a damn. I mean, I had, we had some good teachers in high school. Absolutely. But we also had some teachers that were just there for the paycheck. Yes. And every school is that way. And, yeah. and I don't care who you are or where you're at, you cannot say that you've never had a teacher that was just there for the paycheck. And that Well, the students at TM Landry can say that. Oh, that's true, that's true. <laughs> okay, one school can say that out of how many millions are in this country. Right. So one school can say they don't have teachers that are just there for the paycheck. Yeah. But that really affects performance. It's because the students can tell that you don't want to be there. Yeah. You don't care if we succeed. You know, and and I'm not going to name the teacher, but I did have one math teacher in particular who, it was blatantly obvious she had reached her tenure and she was just there to draw a paycheck. I had an English teacher that was the same way. (laughs) Well, mine was a math teacher. I think we had the same math teacher. It may have been. (laughs) (laughs) But... And I mean, this is, and a lot of this is my fault. I gra- I graduated. I failed her class with a nine. I was always so impressed by that. Like, how did you not accidentally get more correct? It's <laughs> you have to work to have a to have a single digit score in a class. You have to try. Yes. Like you put more effort into failing than it would have taken just to pass the damn class. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, literally, first and foremost, the class was split up. Yeah. We had the first half of the class, then we went to lunch, then we had the second half of the class. Nobody wants to do anything after they get done eating. So, the first half of the class, I would come in, and I would read a book. And then we'd go to lunch. Well, now I'm all fat and happy from lunch. I'm going to come back and take a nap. Yeah. It's a natural progression of things. Exactly. And she would walk around the classroom, and she would tap me on the shoulder and wake me up. Mr. Sanders, are you going to do this assignment? And she'd hand me the paper, and I'd just look at it, and I'd hand it back to her and go, nope. And I'd go back to sleep. Okay. (coughs) But on Fridays, she gave us a pop quiz every morning. And I passed the pop quiz. I think that pissed her off more than anything. (laughs) <laughs> thus reminding me of a story from a math class <laughs> I, I will not say the teacher's name because good lord he would murder me <laughs> <laughs> we were sitting in class and he, we were doing the quadratic we were learning the quadratic equation yes you know who it is <laughs> so he writes the problem on the board because you've had his class before, you know how he did. He'd write oh, yeah. down and say, okay, try to solve it, and first one to solve it, raise their hand. Well, I'm not one for following the rules. <laughs> so he had just finished writing the problem, and I was like half paying attention, just looked up and was like, for minus seven. And he said, hold on, I haven't worked it out yet. <laughs> and he looked down, and he did the math, and he looked up at me, because I'm failing his class at this point. Like, I have like a 30. And he goes, let me get this straight. Show me your work. And I was like, well, I didn't write it down. He was like, so let me get this straight. You're failing my class, but you can do the quadratic formula in your head. And I was like, yeah, that's about the long and short of it. He said, get out of my classroom. <laughs> Just kicked me right out of the class. And I was like, damn, man. Like, you didn't have to do me that dirty. And, you know, that's the other thing, too. The, a- the ACTs, you know, un- under the No Child Left Behind Act. Oh, don't get me started on that shit. They have, <laughs> you know, first first and foremost, this No Child Left Behind thing. I've, I I I have my own personal feelings about it. It's a, it's a clusterfuck. It, yeah, I mean, basically. No Child Left Behind equates to most children getting left behind. It's, you know, they they put more focus on reading and mathematics when it came to the ACTs. They put more focus on reading and mathematics, and they're leaving behind social studies and physical education and U.S. history. All all of these, you know, other science, yes, other important core subjects. Yes, 
No, we, we need to be able to focus. I'm thinking it's they need to be able to focus on reading the menu and counting out change. Which, uh, I mean, there's a lot wrong with that because if you focus only on two subjects, well, great. Now we're going to do really well in two subjects. But I can barely speak the language we all agreed on. Right. <laughs> I mean, we have people out there using defiantly for the word definitely. That's an issue. People who don't know the difference between there as a possessive and there as a location and... There than they are. Yeah. <laughs> like that, this is, We all agreed on this language. We, everybody, like we, we, we took a poll. Yeah. <laughs> like, what, you speak English? I speak English. Okay, we're all going to speak English. Yeah. And yeah. then we don't focus on it? Yeah, and the the other thing is schools in general, they are not teaching basic life skills that you need to be a successful human being. Not, a succe- not, not successful in the business sense, but successful at just living life. Uh, okay. Um, the most useful skill I learned in high school that I still somewhat use to this day was carpentry. Yeah. When, I took, when, I, when we took our ag class. Yeah. I still use everything I learned in that class to this day. Yeah. I don't really so much use the math I learned. Pythagoras can suck it. <laughs> I know more about building things with wood than I do about math. Right. And that's important because that's more of a skill needed than doing a math problem. See, and you know, you hear it time and time again. <laughs> we heard it all the time growing up in school. Uh, especially in math class. This is a skill that you're going to need in the real world. Well, I've yet to ever have to solve for X in the real world. Mm-hmm. However, comma, dot, 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 pause for effect, I will say I never in my entire life expected that I was going to use as much geometry. When I joined the Marine Corps, I was voluntold to become a mortarman. <laughs> voluntold. I've been, yes. I've, I've, I've had that happen to me a lot. I was voluntold to become a mortarman. There is so much geometry involved in that. It is unreal. And I don't know, because I, I fucked off in my geometry class. <laughs> uh, as did I. Because <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, I'm never going to have to know how to measure angles or, you know, Minute of, a, minute of attack or any of that other. And next thing I know, oh, <laughs> oops. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> so, you know, all throughout my mortar training, I had to freaking buckle down. That's, that's, that's the issue with, and I know I'm going to catch hate for this, but that's the issue with government-run education. <laughs> like, name one thing. Aside from defense that the government being involved in has helped us and made us better at it. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, no. I, I, I need, I I need got, Jeremy got with the crickets. <laughs> 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 that's, that's what I mean right there. It, they, they come in, and they're like, okay, you guys are doing poorly. We're going to take over and we're going to impose these stupid rules that teach you how to take standardized tests. And get you through. But how does that help me? How does being able to color in a bubble or write A or true or false help me in the real world? You can fill out a job application. Well, yeah, that's cool. But do I have any skills to go along with the application I just filled out? Absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, I've never once... Fill out an application, skills put, I can diagram a sentence like a motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We, we were talking the other day, and <coughs> I am a firm believer that one class they need to have 
even if it's just for one year, one class they need to have is Life 101. And you learn basic life skills that you may need in everyday life. Things like how to change a tire. I actually met people in the military who did not know how to change a tire. Yeah, I've met several people that don't know how to change a tire. Things like sewing on a button. I'm not a seamstress. I don't know how to sew on a button. If I tried to sew on a button right now and tried to button up my jacket, it'd probably fall off. Well, because you didn't pay attention when you had to take that home at class. Because uh, <laughs> we all had to take it. She wouldn't let us use the sewing machine. She was afraid one of us would sew our hand to the table. That's because one of us did sew our hand to the table. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can jump a forklift. I cannot drive a sewing machine. No. <laughs> but, you know, basic life skills. How to cook. Yeah, that's handy. That's handy. Yeah. That keeps me alive. You know, we, we did a little bit in home ec. Not really. Yeah, we, I think we baked cookies. I, we didn't even do that. Like, we baked cookies and we made Kool-Aid. Why couldn't I get the cookie class? Like, I didn't get that. You know, we baked cookies and we made Kool-Aid. And <coughs> aside from that, you know, we didn't learn how to brown meat or, you know, make spaghetti or, you know, actually cook a meal. And you won't. Because they don't see that as important in school. But what they think is important and what's actually important, two totally different things. Right. That's why, like, I don't know if you agreed with me when I proposed my radical restructuring of the school system. Oh, no, I did agree with you. But, see, at our school, when you got to ninth grade, you had, you had two choices. You could go standard diploma or advanced diploma. Advanced diploma is basically learning everything on standard diploma, just at a faster pace. Right. So when you get to your senior year, well, junior and senior year, you can do dual enrollment or AP classes. Right. See, what I would like to see is because especially for kids around here, I can't speak to kids in other areas, but I know for kids around here, by ninth grade, they know if they're going to college or not. Right. They just, they've already got it in their mind. They know they're going to go. And the other thing is once they get into ninth grade, as it, I can't remember if it's ninth or tenth grade, but they also have the option to start going to tech school. Uh, tenth grade. Tenth grade, tenth yes. Grade they have the school. option to start going to tech school, learning an actual trade. And what I would like to see is get rid, like, get rid of the tech school altogether. Right. You don't need the tech school anymore for what I'm proposing because it's going to be at your school. Instead of doing advanced diploma... And standard diploma, you do a technical diploma and a collegiate diploma. Right. So when you get to ninth grade, if you're one of the kids that says, I, I'm not going to go to college, I, I just I don't want to do it. I don't like school. I don't want to go to school more. Right. So they say, okay, well, is there a skill you want to learn? And then you get into welding or carpentry or auto body or masonry or something. But you pick a skill, and you spend the next four years of your life learning that skill. Right. That way, when you graduate, you are a highly employable individual. Yes. So instead of graduating and going, well, I don't know anything, so now I have to go work at fast food. Yeah, because the way you're talking about doing it, by the time, <laughs> if, you go, if you go the tech school route, yeah. by the time you reach the end of your four years in whatever skill or trade it is you learn, be it electrician, plumbing, masonry, whatever, you have surpassed, by the time you reach the end of your training, your, your 12th year, once you graduate, you have surpassed the requirements needed to fulfill an apprenticeship. Well, yeah, usually. And, and what, what happens when you fill out a job application? How much experience do you have? Four years. I have four years' experience doing this. Yeah. And where did you get your four years' experience? I got it in school. Yeah. That, that was what I did all day, every day. I learned how to do this weld, or I learned how to mix this type of mortar and learn how to put the stuff together in this certain pattern. Yeah. And and then you break it down even further, you know, the fall semester is all classroom instruction. 
<clears throat> and then the spring semester is all prac app. Yeah, because I mean during during the winter time you don't want to be out there trying to build a damn wall or something. It's just no. cold as shit. Or, you know, <laughs> well, laying lay pipe to plumb a house. Or, yeah, I mean I could get behind welding in the winter because <laughs> welding gets warm. I would prefer <laughs> to weld in the winter. <laughs> But, um, so, so you've got the technical side of it, but then let's look at the collegiate side of it. Let's look at the kids that say, okay, I know that I want to go to college. Right. So they start in ninth grade. Well, let's go ahead in ninth grade and let's get them going. And then by the time they hit 10th grade, let's have them ready to take the ACT. Yeah. They take the ACT in 10th grade, and then they know what colleges they can apply to. Mm-hmm. Just based off that score, because most schools have a range saying, well, if you make below this, you can't come here. Right. So you've got that. And then let's go ahead and start dual enrollment as soon as possible. Yeah. And then you can use your 11th and 12th grade years as college prep. Not even college prep. If you do it properly, if, if they did this properly, you could leave high school with an associate's degree. If you did it properly. If they were like, okay, well, I know I want a special, I, I want to do this. Like, like me, I, I knew in ninth grade I wanted to work with computers. Mm-hmm. So if I would have had the chance on advanced diploma to do dual enrollment and take the classes I'm taking and then take collegiate level classes and get them done, I could ar- I could have already had my associate's level degree when I graduated high school and then I don't have to spend the thousands of dollars it takes to get that associate's degree. I can spend money to get the bachelor's degree, which better prepares me more so than the associate's degree. Yeah. And then, you know, like I said, you can do the additional add-on, have a third route for the individuals that know. I knew by the time I was in ninth grade, I was joining the military. I think you knew before that. You always kind of had a high and tight. Well, that's... That's why I said, by the time I was in ninth grade, I knew I was joining the military. Of course, by the time I was in ninth grade, September 11th had already happened. Yeah. Yeah, I was in 10th grade when that happened. Yeah. So, I knew right then and there, yes, I'm joining the military. Fuck college. Fuck welding. We're going into a fucking war. And it's fucking game on. So, like I said the other day, you know, we add in this third route, and you have an actual... ROTC program, no, junior ROTC, but an actual ROTC program. Four years of prep for military. And then, once you've reached your 12th year of school, you're getting ready to graduate, then they give you the option of going to an actual military academy and being commissioned as an officer or going straight from there to boot camp. You can go officer and list, depending upon which way you want to go in your service. Right. And then, you have, again, four years of experience. You've learned your military customs and courtesies. You've learned a basic close order drill. You've learned rifle drill. You know all of the things needed, the basics going into boot camp. Which, and you know what? I, I've got to assume that your average drill instructor or drill sergeant, whichever way you go, is going to be like, Thank God I don't have to teach you how to march. <laughs> I don't. Have oh no, to. you're still going to have the idiots who dropped out of school. Oh and yeah, then... you'll still have those, but for the most part, you're gonna you're gonna be getting recruits that actually know what they're doing. Yeah. So more time can be spent on relevant training, right? As a because I mean, how many times when you were in Iraq did marching? Did, did you really need to know how to march? <laughs> Never. I never want to. All right, get in line. We're marching. Where are we going? Uh, over there where the guy's shooting. I ain't marching over there. I'm you know, first, first and foremost, even if I had been, you know, I was I was with 2nd LAR, so we were a mobilized infantry unit. Yes, we got out and did foot patrols and things like that, but for the most part, we were a mobilized infantry unit. We had LABs carrying us all over the place. But even if I had been in a straight leg unit, not a mobilized infantry unit, then... We still were not doing a patrol through the city with the squad leader in the center of the patrol going, Lap, 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 right, lap. No, we weren't doing that shit. Yeah, because then they know you're coming. And they know what foot you're standing on. You know, the only time 
in all of my years in the military, the only time I ever had to use actual close order drill was we had a retirement ceremony for some <coughs> high ranking enlisted staff and he was, he was like a freaking master gunnery sergeant or something. And we actually had to almost do a parade for this guy's <laughs> retirement ceremony. So one time in 10 years. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you, you, you had to use the marching that you learned. That and when I was in uh, corporal's course. We had to uh, we had to do close we had to do close order drill in corporal's course. Yeah, because as a corporal, we are technically small unit leaders. We are non commissioned officers in the Marine Corps. We are small unit leaders, and we are supposed to know sword manual, guide on manual, rifle drill, uh, close order drill, and we have to know the commands and when to call the commands on what foot, so on and so. But we never used it. So if they uh, if they did the RTC, route, would that do away with the need for corporal's course? No, I don't think it would because corporal's course is a leadership course. Yeah, you're you're instilling in each individual the core leadership values. So. No, you, you would not do away with Corporal's Course or Sergeant's Course or the Staff and CO Academy or anything like that. You just wouldn't have to focus so much on the... You could focus more on... The leadership aspect. Yes. And that's what you want. You want strong leaders. Right. And and that's the thing. It, with the way you set up the school, if you do it properly with the technical degree, you are creating an employee... That is well versed in the and think of the amount of training that saves a company that saves you money because now I don't have to teach you how to weld right because you already know how to weld I can just bring you the blueprints because you already know how to read them and I'm like here's your blueprints here's your materials weld that yeah and you just go all right boss yeah. done don't have to teach you how to drive a forklift you already know how to do it. Exactly, and that would save money. It takes training. You don't have to train. I mean, granted, there are going to be people, like you said, that drop out and still have to be trained, but the vast majority of people at this point wouldn't need training. Just like when you get to, when you leave with your, all from the collegiate path. Now you don't have to go to college and take those eliminator courses that everybody hates. Like speech and, you know, your first level maths and stuff like that. Those are the eliminated. Those are the, if somebody's going to drop out of courses, drop out of college, it's going to be when they're taking those courses, your math, your science, English, speech, stuff like that. Right. Once they get into their actual degree field classes, like their computer classes or their medical classes, they usually don't drop out because they're learning stuff they want to learn. And that's what I think school should be. Learning things that you actually want to learn. Yeah, especially if I'm going to be paying money for it. And I mean, even well, even in a even in a public school system, I would have done a lot, lot better in class if we were learning things that I actually wanted to learn. Yeah, we for sure, for sure we would have. Done, I mean, we excelled in band as it was already. Because we pushed ourselves, but if we had been actually given music that made us challenge ourselves instead of us having to go out and find it, oh yeah, then you know, I mean, it's just like that. Like I loved computers in high school, yeah, but we only had what three computer classes. Yeah, it was like you had you had a basic introduction. You had your keyboarding class, which taught you how to type, which is a handy class, and then you had. Uh, Oh my god! The one where you made all the like the flyers and did spreadsheets and stuff like that. Yeah. Basically, for people that know anything about college, it's microcomputer applications, just like CIS one forty six or something like that. Right. We had that in high school, and then we had one more, and I can't even remember what it was, but it didn't deal so much with the computers as like the software, and I'm not a software guy. I'm not going to be a software engineer. No. I freaking hate coding. I've taken coding classes. Coding sucks. 
those of you out there that know how to code, I commend you because I will never do that shit. But I wanted to learn more about hardware. So if we would like to we got to break down computers because I mean we got new computers. So we could have took the old ones apart and learned how they worked. That would have been more fun for me. I probably would have done really well in that class. See, the one computer class that I did well in was the one you were talking about where we were building the flyers and the ads yeah. and you know, the, the graphic design. That that was the kind of thing that interested me when it came to computers, was graphic design and graphic artists and stuff like that. Yeah, you know what they added after we graduated? What's that? A video production class. Actually, they added that I was in that class. Oh, you took, oh I thought that was after I graduated. No, they added well, that. Well, you... Which way? <laughs> um, the uh, the football team had just gotten um, new video recording equipment to record <laughs> football games and the practices with, and they came to me because it was all being done on an iMac computer. And at the time, I was pretty much the only person in the entire school who had any experience using an iMac computer. I had the old school iMac too, the all in one with the it was, yeah, it was really the like colored computer. and yeah. yeah. Which, well, I knew how to use it. Me and Nathan Owens knew how to use a Mac. Cause, like, we were the computer nerds. Yeah. <laughs> like, we used to fuck with people. <laughs> now we got to go. Because you know there's that one function key that makes all the desktop icons go away. Yes. <laughs> so people would sit down at the Mac and be like, all right, what do I do? I'm like, hit that button. And they push it. And I'm like, what the fuck did you do? <laughs> and so they're freaking out thinking they just broke a $2,000 computer. And I'm like, just hit the button again. And it comes No, out. you see, you got to carry it on. Even further, you got to be like, okay, no, don't worry about this. Let me get in here and fix this. Crack the knuckles, get in here, hit a few keystrokes, and then bam, hit it, and then it all comes back up. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't take it that far. Yeah, but every time they had an issue with that freaking computer, they couldn't get the software to load, or they couldn't get the videos to upload to edit and all that. I'd be sitting in the middle of the class, and then I'd hear it over the intercom. Uh, can can you send Daniel Sanders to the computer lab, please? Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, you want to know what's even better? Uh, me and Nathan were actually, or we were actually the high school um, network engineers. So, like, I would literally be sitting in uh, either my math class or some other class. And there'd be a knock on the door, and somebody, a student would poke their head in and be like, oh, "Miss Witten needs to see him." <laughs> <laughs> so and I would have to leave my class and then go fix a computer for another teacher. Yeah, which you didn't care. You were getting out of class. Yeah, I didn't care. I was getting out of class, but and it also gave me time to sneak away and smoke a cigarette. But <laughs> I didn't. I didn't smoke cigarettes at school. <laughs> That's bad. We don't encourage that. <laughs> Except for when we do. <laughs> you know, and that's that, that's that's another topic too. We can we kind of try to away, but you know, kids going to college getting unnecessary degrees. Oh, <laughs> oh man. How about how about that? That's that's one. That, that 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 is definitely a problem. But you also have kids going to school, going into degree fields they know nothing about. Yeah. I had a guy in one of my computer classes. We were doing hardware support and software support. You kind of need to know more than how to check your email for this class. So we had to take it super slow for this guy because he didn't know what the hell he was doing. So that's a problem. Yeah. But the liberal arts degree is more of a problem. You know, it's and talking about that, it's one thing... Going in to learn a new trade or skill. Yeah. You know, I, I have worked, since I got out of the military, I have worked in several different job fields. From um, selling cars to being maintenance manager at a hotel I to uh, <laughs> to being a chimney sweep. Didn't help with that one. I ain't calling yeah. that house. Yeah. Chim- First and foremost, I was surprised chimney sweeps still exist. <laughs> I did not know that that was still an active trade. <laughs> But I was actually working as a manager. I was the maintenance manager at said hotel, and we had this uh, we had this city council get together at the hotel, and I'm leading a group of city council members around the hotel, telling them about everything. And one of the city council members was a uh, was the owner of the chimney sweep company, and 
he started talking to me <laughs> and you know started talking to me about money and all that other stuff and then he just offers me a job he's like you know do you do you know how to turn screws oh well, yeah <laughs> obviously <laughs> and i know the difference between a phillips and a flathead too <laughs> i can even break out a star bit if you want me to Ooh, yeah yeah <laughs> and <laughs> well can you can you hammer a nail <laughs> well yeah <laughs> with the best of them <laughs> Then he offers me a job, and he was like, I, I, I own a local chimney sweep company. They still do that? <laughs> Wait a minute. Is Mary Poppins going to attack me? <laughs> you know, I'm thinking Dick Van Dyke is going to jump out of somewhere and start singing Chim 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 Chiru or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, so, okay, so the college degrees, that, that, that they don't get you nowhere. Yeah, you know, like, like, like I said, it's one thing if you're going in... Completely blind, wanting to learn a new trade. Yeah, I. But going in, knowing what you're doing in this liberal arts degree in basket weaving or whatever, and then, and you bitch and complain because you have this four year degree in basket weaving that you can't do shit with that you just spent one hundred and twenty thousand dollars on. And now you got to pay it back. Yeah, now you got to pay back all of this. St- loans, and this is how you get individuals working at McDonald's ending $15 an hour. See, that, that's the, the first thing, the absolute first question, if you're thinking about going to college, that you should ask when you see your advisor for the first time, what jobs can I get with this degree? Right. And if your advisor looks you dead in your fucking face and laughs at you, pick a different yeah, career. Yeah, you probably don't need to go that route. <laughs> like, pick pick a different career. You know, I do, I do the same thing when people come to me asking about uh, joining the military. Well, what job do you think I would be good at in the military? Well, it doesn't matter what job you'd be good at in the military. Look at what job you want to do when you get out of the military. <laughs> because that's one of the questions I ask them. Do you plan on staying in a full 20 years or 20 years plus and retiring? Oh, no, I'm just going to do four years and get out just so I can have the GI Bill to pay for me to go to college and all this other stuff. Okay, that's all well and good to each their own. What do you want to do when you get out of the military? Do you want to be a cop? Go MP or go infantry. Do you want to be a diesel mechanic? Motor T. Do you want to be an air traffic controller? Go air wing. That's when I was picking my degree. Like, I knew I wanted to do computers. And so uh, so I signed up for all the computer stuff and picked my degree. And I asked my advisor at the time, I said, well, what jobs can I get with this? And he says, well, it really just depends on the classes you take. And he told me the classes. He was like, you know, you do these classes here and you can get a job doing hardware. You can get a job doing tech support. He's like, you do these classes over here, you can do like cybersecurity stuff. And cybersecurity, for as much as I hate software, I actually like cybersecurity. So I took a lot of cybersecurity classes because the thing most people don't realize about cybersecurity is they are hiring people to do these jobs that have no training in the field whatsoever. Like they're hiring like ex military guys yeah. to do cybersecurity because they know security. Yeah, that's cool. He can check a perimeter, but how is he keeping you from getting into your firewall? Yeah. He don't know dick about a firewall. Well, you know, that's like I was telling you today while we were out riding around. I pointed out that security company to you, and I was like, yeah, I stopped in there to talk to him about getting a security job, and then I found out it was a totally different kind of security. Yeah, but see, they'll still hire you because they look at it this way. Okay, well, they know OPSEC. They know about, like perimeter defense mm-hmm. so that, that you have the basic concepts now you just have to apply it to a computer world oh no 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 no! they were they were wanting to look at hiring me on and they started at, well do you know anything about wiring or <laughs> <laughs> i know if it's hot you don't want to touch it <laughs> <laughs> i know you're supposed to turn off the breaker before you do anything <laughs> but but, but so that's what so they want they're they're hiring the ex-military guys into the cyber security because they're like okay well since we can't find anybody with this degree, we'll just teach them what we need them to know. Right. And, you know, that's great because, I mean, 
I mean, you got a lot of ex-military guys coming back that can't find work. So yeah. if you can find work doing that, more power to you. Which, again, that goes back to what we were talking about. Changing the way things are done. And then once they actually get out there, they have the necessary training to do it. They don't, now the company doesn't have to waste money on training these individuals. Which I can tell you, like... Most companies spend a lot on training. Yeah, and don't and don't get me wrong. You know, even if you did have something, there is still going to be a certain level of training because Company A is going to do it differently than the way Company B does it. So if you go to work at Company A, you have to learn the way Company A does oh, it. Oh yeah. And then if you go over to Company B, you have to learn the way Company B does it. Well, see, I got a job at a place in Rainsville. Lift, mm-hmm. and so I went through their forklift training, which was like me sitting in a room for three hours watching a video, taking a test, and then I go back there and I do my drive test. My literally my drive test was pull up to the pallet, pick up the pallet, put, put the on, pallet down, put it on the shelf, back up, drop your forks, go get the pallet, put it back down. That was my drive test. Yeah, and then that night I had to come into work and they're like, all right, you're driving the forklift. But I don't actually know how to drive the forklift. So then I go to a company in Scottsboro. And I was like, hey, you know, I have forklift training. And they're like, okay, cool. I did not have forklift training. <laughs> that, that didn't make you drive the slalom? I had a, I had a forklift acquaintanceship. <laughs> I was acquainted with them. Well, no, when I got to the place in Scottsboro, I got forklift training, son. Like, they took, we worked 12 hours a day. My first day when they were like, all right, you know how to do this part of the job. Now we got to learn the, the forklift part of the job. My first day of training on forklift, we spent eight out of 12 hours on a forklift doing nothing but driving. I mean, I had to drive big forks, the small forks, the pole truck, the squeeze truck. I had to learn how to drop every forklift and be certified on every forklift before I was allowed to go back to my area and drive the one forklift I was going to use. Right. So, yeah. Companies train differently, but at least you have a leg up. Yeah. Saying, well, I know how to drive a forklift. Yeah. I might not know how you want it done, but I know how. You know how, you know the basic I know the principles. Like, I know what this lever does. And I know that if you turn the gas off, it really pisses people off. (laughs) (laughs) Not that we ever did that. And you say that was the other thing, too. I'm sure you had to learn about the different types of forklifts. Oh, yeah, electric. Electric, gas. Diesel. Uh, yeah, the stand, the, the stand-up lifts. Man, the stand-up lift. You ever drove a stand-up lift? Yes. Oh, my. Okay. <laughs> the first time I ever drove a stand-up lift, because you got the dead man switch you got to stand on, right? Yeah. Do not take your foot off that fucking switch. <laughs> I have a feeling you did this. You know, I forgot what I was doing. I kind of zoned out. And let me tell you, you ever seen an 8,000 pound piece of equipment stop on a dime? Yeah, you don't stop on a dime. It does. You don't. (laughs) So when this thing stopped, I continued my trek south. Uh, I, I can't attest to that. I can't attest to the fact that a Humvee will stop on a dime. Yeah, but you stop with it. Yeah, I stopped with it because I was wearing my seatbelt. The instructor in the passenger seat wasn't. And he got really friendly with the dashboard real quick. <laughs> well, clicking your ticket, son. Clicking your ticket. That extends to Iraq. <laughs> I think that's probably the only time where I, as a Lance Corporal, was able to look at the Corporal and go, Are you fucking retarded? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's. There, there's there's, there's got to be a better way to do what we're trying to do. Yeah, there is. You know, we're, we're yeah, we we got to wrap this up. So, you know, I'm going to close out by saying, you know, if if you're listening right now, if you're considering going to college, you know, take heed in what we've been saying. Look at what you want your life path to be, and then make that your focus on college. Plain and, and simple. And if you want to do a tech job, for the love of God, pick something that makes sense for you. Right. So with that, I think we're going to close out again. Um, don't forget to go on Facebook, check out our page, Two Beards Talking, like us, follow us, and, and uh, you know, interact with us on there. 
So, uh, you know, this has been a great show. I've really enjoyed it. Ah, Joe. You know, we're going to sign off with that. Now, this is Two Beards Talking again. I'm Daniel Sanders. And I'm Matt Lasseter. Big shout out to the troops, everybody. Hey, thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.